Hello, welcome to Fun Facts. My name is Dr. Richard Kent, and today I want to talk about carbon dating. Because uh, according to carbon dating, uh, planet Earth is 4.54 billion years old. And this is what's normally taught um, on the internet, this is what's taught to school children, and this is what is taught at universities. And it is actually a major problem because according to the scriptures, unless Jesus and Dr. Luke were both liars, this earth is 6,000 years old and I'll explain very simply uh, where we get that from. Um, in Luke chapter 3, we're given the ancestors of Jesus Christ. Uh, going down from God through Adam, through all the patriarchs down to Jesus Christ, are 77 generations. Now of course the patriarchs lived up to 900 years um, before they died. Um, that was before the flood, which was 4,400 years ago. So I've just allocated an, uh, an average um, time of 50 years per generation. But actually it doesn't make a great deal of difference whether you make it 30 years, 50 years, or even 120 years. Um, it doesn't make a great deal of difference. But I'll use 50 years, and using 50 years, um, 77 generations is 3,850 years, or roughly 4,000 years. And of course Jesus to now is 2,000 years. So, according to Luke chapter 3, Adam to Jesus Christ is 4,000 years, Jesus to now is 2,000 years, that makes a total from Adam to now of six thousand years roughly. Now why is that important? Because two very important scriptures, uh, Mark 10.6, uh, Matthew 19.4, uh, paraphrasing, Jesus said this, um, Adam and Eve were created at the beginning of the creation. Well we've just worked out that Adam was created six thousand years ago, so Jesus is actually saying here that the whole universe is six thousand years old. Coming back to carbon dating, the carbon daters say that the planet Earth was 4.54 billion years old. The whole universe is 13.78 billion years old. Uh, primitive life evolved in the primordial slime 3.9 billion years ago. So I want to first uh, talk about the very clever theory of uh, carbon dating and then talk about the problems of carbon dating. Now radioactive carbon dating is actually very clever. Um, uh, it's quite a, a sophisticated uh, way of dating uh, anything, whether you date a bone, uh, a stone, a piece of granite, uh, um, a piece of wood, or anything you like you can date with carbon dating. And this is how it works. Um, basically the Sun, 93 million miles away, um, is a nuclear fusion reactor which gives off masses and masses of energy uh, in the form of photons which consists of a, a great deal of the visible spectrum which we see of course, infrared to warm us, but also damaging X-rays and gamma rays. Now, uh, according to the theory of um, carbon dating, in the upper atmosphere, the stratosphere, uh, the uh, radioactive rays, the cosmic rays, actually bombard nitrogen, not all of the nitrogen, just some of the nitrogen, in the upper atmosphere and convert some of it into radioactive C14. That's radioactive carbon-14. Now carbon normally is C12, but this is the radioactive form C14. Now both ordinary carbon, C12, and radioactive carbon, C14, combine with oxygen to form carbon dioxide, the gas in the upper atmosphere. Uh, this is dissolved in rainwater, comes down to the surface of the earth, and, and um, is incorporated by photosynthesis into all vegetation. Now of course animals eat vegetation and we eat both the vegetation and the animals and the fish and the birds. Um, and so 
all living things um, have a certain amount of radioactive C14 in them. Now, uh, the uh, very clever scientists, the carbon daters, have devised a C14 calibration curve. And according to their calibration, the half-life of C14 is 5,730 years. That means after 5,730 years, half of the C14 has degraded back to nitrogen again. So, here is a carbon dating machine, very sophisticated. You put your specimen into the carbon dating machine, and work out how much C14 is in your specimen, and then using a calibration curve, you can work out how old is the um, specimen you've just introduced into the ca carbon dating machine. All very simple and straightforward. Unfortunately, there is a major problem for anyone who hasn't read or understood Genesis chapter 1 about creation. Uh, on the second day of creation, uh, the Bible very clearly says that uh, let us make a firmament in the midst of of the waters, to divide the waters above the firmament from the waters below the firmament. Now unfortunately firmament is not a word we use very often, but we're told later on in the same chapter, Genesis chapter 1, that the birds flew in the firmament. So we know now that the firmament is the sky. So God created sky to divide a water canopy above the sky from the sea below the sky. So that's what we now, that's what uh, we had before the flood, a water canopy above uh, the present sky. Of course that all came down um, on the, at Noah's flood, which is 4,400 years ago. Um, but the effect of this water canopy was actually huge. Um, it created um, uh, a, a wonderful a temperate uh, greenhouse effect for the whole of planet Earth. It also raised the amount of oxygen, the partial pressure of oxygen on planet Earth. But from the context of this um, particular subject of carbon dating, it filtered out the uh, radioactive uh, uh, solar, way, uh, solar radiation, that is the uh, X-rays and the gamma rays. So the X-rays and the gamma rays were filtered out by the canopy of water before the flood. And the, and the flood uh, happened roughly 4,400 years ago. Now, before the flood, um, people lived much longer. It may have been because of the uh, much higher partial pressure of oxygen, uh, but it could equally have been, and possibly as well as, uh, the uh, filtering out of the damaging X-rays and gamma rays which actually affects our DNA, the genetic coat in all of our hundred trillion cells. And maybe uh, we all age much more quickly than our patriarchs used to and that's why we all die much younger than the patriarchs used to. But from the point of view of uh, radioactive carbon dating it's actually vitally important uh, because the uh, Radioactive C14 was not formed in the upper atmosphere when there was a large water vapour canopy above the sky. So uh, radiocarbon dating is very clever and does work for 4,400 years um, from now, uh, but it doesn't work before the flood for the very simple reason that um, radioactive C14 was not formed in the upper atmosphere simply because the radioactive uh, gamma rays and x-rays did not penetrate the water vapour canopy above the sky. I hope you understand that. Thanks for listening and God bless. <laughs>